my name is Anurag. Uh, I work for Red Hat, and this talk is a result of my experimentation a couple of weeks back with OpenShift. So this is a result of the notes which I took during the experimentation. Um, so what we'll be covering in this uh, session is an overview of OpenShift, PAS, the command line client called as RHC, deploying a sample app, uh, see how to add some add-ons called as cartridges, uh, we'll explore the shell, the, the remote shell which is opened by uh, Open, uh, OpenShift, how to add databases, how to view logs, etc. So uh, this is where PaaS stands. This is a layer infrastructure. This is the stuff that you build software, and this is what PAS provides you. So it provides you an environment where you can. It helps you with writing code, putting up CI, uh, version control in some cases. Helps you with testing. Uh, let's see the definition of PAS. According to DevOps Borat. This is what he means, but uh, in general, it lets you provide. It gives you a brief platform where you can put in your software on top of IaaS, for example, AWS or OpenStack or something else. Uh, have you heard of PAS before? Any examples that you can quote of, like Google App Engine or something else, Heroku? Okay. Sorry. OpenStack is actually infrastructure. The, in the previous diagram, this is where OpenStack sits, and this is on top. This is stuff. The stack runs on top of an infrastructure like OpenStack or AWS or something else. And this is what end users like developers we build. Okay? So OpenShift was recently released as an open source application on GitHub by Red Hat. Uh, the components are open source. It contains a broker. Uh, a message broker, a database layer. You can run OpenShift on your laptop, maybe on your data, on your premises, or AWS, or wherever you want. Uh, it supports it's something called as cartridges. It's, it's take modules where you can define a module. Uh, for example, a language is a module. Right? You can plug in a language into OpenShift, which and then it will provide you that functionality. For example, these many languages are supported out of the box: Node.js, Python, Perl. Cartridge is already provided, and there's a cartridge called Do It Yourself Cartridge DIY, where you can build in your own functionality. So you can uh, plug in any stuff that runs on x86 architecture L6.2. For example, a team from uh, somewhere in Europe they had built an arc, uh, a cartridge called as Cobol cartridge. So you can just take DIY cartridge and uh, modify it. There are many articles on the wiki which tell you how to uh, make your own cartridge. The cartridges for databases. The cartridges for metrics, the cartridge for cron, any functionality you can think of, you can pick up a DIY cartridge and build on top of it. And uh, OpenShift, the default one which is provided with RH Cloud, it lets you scale from one machine, many many people do many many nodes, and uh, lets you horizontally scale. Uh, Let's let's go into a detail how to get a sample app started on OpenShift. You need to go to openshift.redhat.com, sign up for an account. So by default, what it provides you is uh, a domain called as your namespace. You can set up your namespace here. So you can set up your namespace. I've set up a namespace called a root pond. If this is not there, it will let you feed the entry. So there's a namespace called root pond and application name. 
So your domain where you deploy the application would be application name hyphen a namespace dot rhcloud.com. You can use the command line tools to override this and put in your own domain, for example www.woodcom.com and then you can map that domain name with this particular instance. Right? So there are no applications present, just namespace is defined and uh, this is the structure of the URL that will be. So what we'll do is we'll create an application called as memegram which will be uh, an Instagram killer. RHC command is present in uh, Ruby gems, so you can directly say RHC. Uh, if JSON pure is not, just say JSON underscore pure, and then install RHC. So, or this package in Fedora also, you can just install the package, RHC will be there. You can install RHC and then app create minus application name and then specify the cartridge name. So, it supports several cartridges. It supports these many application cartridges. Node.js, Python, Jenkins, Ruby. We'll select the Ruby one. This is your OpenShift username and password. So what it will do is it will create a JIT repo for you and create a DNS entry memegram hyphen rootconf.rhcloud.com create a JIT repo, clone that repo inside your home directory and update the DNS entries. So this is what it creates, application name hyphen namespace dot rhcloud.com. This is where you can SSH. This is the unique ID at the rate, this is your instance. You can directly SSH to the instance and view your shell and databases. Uh, this is a JIT repo and this is application name. So what I'll do is I have a, a sample application on GitHub. I'll pull that repo, merge with it and try to see how to deploy it. Created a JIT repo from OpenShift's default template and created here. CD Mingram. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm overwriting the default template with my application wherever it resides. And then I say JIT push and it will push to origin which is your open stack, sorry not open, open shift JIT. So what this will do is this will push and then it will stop the passenger. I'm using uh, Ruby uh, uh, cartridge so it can stop the passenger. 
start it again. If there's a gem file, it will start pulling in the gems, put in vendor, and then restart the application. If you have any question, you can ask right away. Yeah. I've uh, I've tried uh, Heroku, but it was long back when it was launched. Any kind of comparison? I can maybe give between uh, Google App Engine and this one. So, yeah. So uh, many pass providers, for example, maybe uh, the Google App Engine, it's limited to Java or Python. Here you have a cartridge called DIY where you can any you can plug in with any binary that runs on x86 architecture. So you can build your own uh, cartridge and you can use. So it's like basically any any package that you can run on rel environment, you can probably support that language on it. So uh, and uh, it's it's available as uh, on-premise solution. You can put in your own private cloud and make your own pass. Yeah, I don't have to run it on. So what is running right now? Is provided by Azure. Yeah. So the domain is irishcloud.com. So you can like, get the whole stack for yourself, and you can run on your own private cloud. It's open source. It was released about uh, a couple of weeks back. So you talk me. You can go jitter.com slash uh, openshift slash uh, stickshift or something is there. So that is the repository which contains uh, everything. Right? So it's, it's all there, and it has. Uh, I can show it right away. Can I hybrid between? Yeah. So yeah, the reference is crankcase, and there are many uh, examples given. Yeah, you see. Can I do a hybrid? Yeah, local deployment, as in you can run it on your laptop, right? So you can uh, basically run the uh, run the broker crankcase on your own laptop, and then you can. Build your own instance on on your own laptop or your private cloud something. Yeah, so the cartridge is is basically a YML specification. So you can get the DIY cartridge and start filling in your information, or you can look at many cartridges which are provided here. So you can just pull in anything. This is DIY bin hello. So this is a hello example. You can just stuff in your own solution. The people have built uh, support for various languages on this. Uh, of which one? Of the instance, you know, my package of the instance. For example, I build a package using PHP. Yeah. Then I want to package. So you you package it like normal package, right? It, it deploys in JIT. So. So your SaaS is. Yeah, yeah. So it deploys via JIT. Uh, 
uh, I'm actually not getting question, but I, I, I think I'll answer your question. You, you're saying you want to deploy your SaaS, your, your own custom application over OpenShift, right? And you want to package this. So you can package your application and then... Uh, and then Hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can use Fabric or something that you can, that that can be done. So using Fabric or Capistrano, no, you can like push in uh, the preferred like if you're using JBoss something which is the preferred deployment method, you can use that. Yeah. Yeah, it comes with load balancers. So uh, the wiki page uh, where you can like, see how to, how to do that. I haven't explored that. I just made notes of my experimentation. Uh, it, I'm not sure because it's it's tested on Fedora and Rel, and since it's from Red Hat, I I was surprised if it. <laughs> yeah, so you get the point. So uh, yeah, so I deployed it, and uh, you can visit it directly. So this, this URL is uh, over HTTPS or whichever, there's a default certificate which is there, or you can put in your own uh, domain there. Uh, there's a feature request for uh, custom domain, custom certificates. So this is there in the process, you can, in some time you'll find it. Uh, next we'll see how to uh, add cartridges, support for let's say MongoDB or uh, matrix cartridge to see what the application is uh, uh, going through. So uh, it deploy it created a MongoDB instance for you, and these are credentials which you can configure in your uh, YML file in your settings file, or you can retrieve these using environment variables. So as we log into the shell, we'll see it defines many predefined variables depending on uh, what cartridge you've added, which you can directly retrieve using env or whichever language you're using. Okay. So or we can list the cartridges. Right. So these are the new cartridge which supports HA proxy and PGSQL. So this is uh, by default available for everyone. So you can like, switch in on, switch it off whenever you want. So it shows you basic CPU, memory, and application usage. I will see how the shell uh, looks like. So you can say uh, RHC domain show, it will show you the information for your entire namespace. This is the application's UID. We'll log into this shell. So these are the two cartridges which we added. This is application, this is repository.
and these are environments where variables which are defined. Uh, you can pick up your uh, noise your DB host, app DNS. You can pick up various details from there and then directly configure your application based on that. So your access log and everything, application log, everything is there. You can directly monitor or retrieve it using SSH and everything. Uh, one more thing we'll see is uh, how to take snapshot. So what this will do is stop all the services, stop all the cartridges, and take a tar wall of it. So, a snapshot. Okay. Stop all the services, take all the configuration, uh, make it in a tarball and put in your uh, home directory which you can distribute and maybe restore the snapshot again on some other application. And you can do things like port forwarding, let's say if you're uh, if you're running on some other port and if the ports are blocked, AT, only AT is open, you can do application port forwarding so it will start it will open uh, ports in a local machine 120.001 and you can directly access the application or maybe Mongo database or anything else. So you can have PostgreSQL, MySQL, you have MongoDB, these three databases support out of the box. You can select any of them and it will uh, grant you access details for that. And uh, about uh, 512 MB of space is there, so you can like fairly a small application you can fit in there. So yeah, so that was about it. Uh, the result of my uh, experimentation open shift for a couple of weeks. Yeah, so this is, you can view the logs in tail mode or you can directly log into shell and then tail it, whichever way you prefer. Snapshots, port forwarding, you can do this way. Uh, you can sign up here, GitHub account is here where Crankface and uh, all the repository example cartridges are given. Uh, IRC, Twitter handle, this fairly active Twitter handle where you can see what people are developing. They keep retweeting stuff wherever you find a timeline. Uh, this is the meme graph application. Um, yeah, so that's about it. I'm going to do my IRC and Twitter. So, any questions or anything? How do they the VPN? VPN. I, I doubt they allow VPN access to there. But they, they do port forwarding, so you can, let's say, the application which are running, you can directly hit them through the ports. That too. Or the shell is fairly good enough. But I, I haven't checked if they do source forwarding over the shell or something like that. So. Hmm. Yeah, so as per the wiki, it's uh, the, the, the instance that they're running is on uh, AWS. And uh, it's running 6.2 Red Hat Enterprise Linux and uh, x86 architecture. So anything that runs on this architecture on this version will run on their uh, platform. So you can upload and directly start running. Yeah. Thanks for attending.